Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe. I'm Trevor Kern, your digital marketing guy. And I'm Joseph Christina, your professional photographer. So grab a latte, pull up a chair, and join us as we chat about the art and business of photography. Welcome back, everybody. This hour, we have the incredibly talented author and educator, Michael Freeman. Welcome to the show, Michael. Pleasure to be here. So for all the listeners out there that might not know who you are or have seen any of your books, which is, I don't know if that's possible, but if that's the case, give us a little background about yourself. Well, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm English. And I'm based in London. I'm an editorial photographer, uh, which means that most of my career has been for magazines, uh, but also books. I, time life gave me my first break into photography <laughs> a very long time ago. I won't say how long. And I then started working for the Smithsonian Magazine, with whom I had a very long relationship over 30 years, or over 40 stories for them, uh, which has been great. And that's my background, but of course, as we know, uh, the world of editorial assignment photography is changing, and it's not changing necessarily for the better. But I've always had uh, a great interest in, in books. I, I like books, actually, despite tablets and things for which we're doing work now. I personally like the physicality. Of, I like a big book. The smell, the feel. The feel, the heft. In <laughs> yeah. fact, my, weight of it. The weight, the, the, <laughs> but my latest book, not a book about photography, weighs in at three kilos. Well, we started that way. I was less concerned with how we get to three kilos, uh, like size or weight of paper, than the fact that this would be something that's really separated out from digital media, which I think is important. No, that's great. So now you're obviously you're an author. So what types of books do you write for photography? Do you, okay. you write on specific subjects or kind of general photography? Um, it has changed. I should explain that um, writing books on photography, which have done more than 40, uh, which is wow. really probably too many, 40 books, <laughs> um, is my evening job. My day job is doing editorial work. I've, in fact, this month, um, one of my photography books, uh, a new one we've got launching here called Photographer's Vision, takes the total count up to exactly 120 books. Wow. Wow. Well, this is audio. They can't see how old I am. But if you, if you, if you do three... <laughs> so you've been doing it for a while. You, you do three or four a year and you put in the years, you get there. Three or four a year, though, that's still a lot when it comes to publishing a book, right? Yeah, I suppose <laughs> so. But, you know, I'm used to it. So I, I don't sort of agonize too much about getting started, and I pretty well know what I want to do. No, and I thought doing a book. daily blog was a lot. <laughs> no, this, 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 this I could not do. I, I, do, I do a weekly blog for a, um, a camera accessor, accessory manufacturer for this year, uh -huh. and my goodness, you know, the deadline suddenly, I don't know what happens, they'd suddenly creep up on you. You're getting the email, Michael, where's your article? <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed. What? Panic. And didn't I send it to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> let me go ahead and resend that. So anyways, let me ask you a question. I guess, you know, we're at the digital age now, um, and it seems like a lot of, you know, we're just talking about half the books and the smell and the texture and how much we love them. Things are more coming into the, the pad type of realm and reading on the computer and this type of thing, going from the actual physicality to a digital type base. Um, what are you doing? Are you doing ebooks? Are you doing anything on the digital side? Well, one of the things, my next book will be about uh, essentially what I and many of my colleagues, friends of mine have always done, which is storytelling. You know, those editorial assignments, photo essays. And we hear a lot these days about storytelling, but I, I don't see too much about how it really works, how you plan for it specifically. Now, uh, the photo essay grew up in the era of really the 40s, 50s and 60s, and it's a mature form. A lot of people, magazines, picture editors, art directors, put a lot of skill and energy into developing it. And it's very sophisticated by now. Open any magazine, physical magazine. The, but the new way in which uh, the photo essay, the story, and that's my primary form of photographic uh, expression, if you like, is not going to be like that. It's going to be on screen, on a screen, of some kind coming to you or in your hands already and one of the forms is the slideshow and this I found very interesting because if you 
if you go online and look at all the slideshows out there including from you know some of the major publishers like the New York Times Washington Post you'll see you'll see a lot of fairly efficient stuff but you know there's not much work being done in terms of understanding how to get the most out of uh, pictures when you don't have the spatial opportunity that a big double spread gave you it's all linear now and the tools are cinematographic and these can be used or more often abused you know you can go too tricky too many page flips funny transitions and this needs a lot of work a lot of thought by everyone but everyone can do it as well as that we've now got overlaid the tablets the the iPad that you're holding in your hand and this provides yet another medium because what what the tablets can do is mix various media in fact uh, we just been uh, my publishers and I in fact this week launching a new uh, app coming out as an app um, <laughs> Uh, for the iPad and the Android called the Photographer's Eye magazine. It, the name's based on my best-selling book, Photographer's Eye, but because we all have to be very cute on the internet, it's I with a lowercase i to show we're there you go. in touch. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. But, the, but what's interesting is that we take an article, a feature, and it's all about photographers. I'm afraid there's not a single f-stop lens in it. it it's not about the, the technicals, as I'd call it. It's about it's about ideas, visual imagination, how real assignment photographers work and have worked. Is that you can divide it all out. All right, you swipe the pages. We call them pages, but I'm not really sure what they are. We can have text, of course. I mean, you can have the text pop on. Uh, you can have sequences of images, audio captions, in addition to a short text caption, and video. So you can mix all of these and learning how to do it in such a way that we're, we're actually dividing uh, a story or an article up. So some bit goes into a short video, some bit goes into audio, is, is a fascinating exercise. Yeah, that whole, that synergy of everything, putting everything coming together, that hybrid where it's no longer a picture, it's no longer a video, it's no longer text, it's everything all combined into something that moves people is amazing and being able to put it on a pad or put it on a computer or wherever you put it is compelling to say the least right sure, yeah. so well, it's a great opportunity but but it's got to be worked on to work absolutely right. and having the ability um, to maybe let's say update your book or your magazine on the fly for 99 cents or a dollar or two dollars you would never be able to have that in a physical form right this is and true. make changes on the fly let's say there was an edit correction <laughs> yeah, do we do that? not say corrections <laughs> yes instead of having to post on the next month oh we kind of followed up on 52 yes, <laughs> yeah. it was a it was a fat finger error Sorry. exactly and now all of a sudden it just changes yes. and people don't even realize the difference and it's always pristine content <laughs> the emails stop coming in <laughs> let me ask you real quick um, as far as the trade show itself what is being highlighted what are you highlighting right now yeah I'm, uh, I'm I'm here at the invitation of my American publishers focal press who've been putting me on a three-week publicity tour uh, we're coming to the end of it now we've been on the West Coast DC Philadelphia which has been great actually I've really enjoyed it giving talks and and, uh, and this and that as well as shooting the um, that I have a new book out called the photographer's vision which is the third in the series begun by photographer's eye you were asking me earlier what what kind of subjects I've tackled in all these far too many books in the earlier ones a pretty predictable range but frankly I have backed right off now from equipment software technical things there's so much out there there's a lot of other books and frankly the world of photo publishing doesn't need me to add any more of that but what I'm concerned about and it's a concern that my my friends who are also editorial photographers share is that there's sight getting lost of what photography is really about and it's not about the next cute 
piece of equipment. Of course we pay attention to equipment. Professionals probably pay more serious attention than, than anyone else, but we don't obsess about it and we keep it in its place because really photography is about, it's about having, knowing what you're going to shoot. In, in our cases, constructing a story, building a picture script, uh, prepping, logistics, and then it's about having visual imagination and exercising it very carefully, very professionally, framing, composition. And, and to me, this is what photography is about. So you were saying Absolutely. you were shooting, right? You were shooting while you were out. How much shooting do you do in comparison to writing? What is the ratio? Oh, I wish you hadn't asked me that question. <laughs> Fortunately, it's still in favor of, of real work. Um, and I'm, I'm determined to keep it that way. Obviously, there's, there's quite a lot of pressure from uh, my publishers here, quite rightly, to you know, produce more things. But the day that I spend more time writing, talking, pontificating <laughs> about what I should be doing, I'll have lost it. And right. I'm not going to let that happen. Yeah. So in fact, I'm flying back to London on Monday, Six days later, I'm on a plane to Bangkok, and I'm going to be shooting Southeast Asia for four weeks on a new project. Nice. I have to. That's how you keep your, your thumb on the pulse of photography. You have to that's keep, how I keep my sanity, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. you got to get out from behind the computer and actually get out and do it. <laughs> Utterly. You know, I like, I like your new book, and I like the idea of focusing more on the vision than the technical. You know, I, I get questions all the time from people. You know, uh, my background is mainly uh, design and photography and I get questions all the time oh what software should I be learning you know what and I'm like don't worry so much about the software I mean you need to know your basic programs focus on your creativity look at what other people are doing focus on what the trends are and what the styles are and and become you know once you get immersed in that you'll be able to become start becoming a trendsetter as opposed to somebody that's following and if you don't focus on that creativity you don't focus on that vision you're going to be average as a photographer you know, Absolutely. You're not going to be a great photographer. You could be a good photographer, technically. You could be fantastic. But to have that vision is so important. Quite right. Quite right. It was really great having you on the show. It was amazing. Thank you so much for stopping by. You're incredible. Um, if the listeners want to find out more about you and see your work, where's the best place for them to go? Okay, the, the default method is type in Michael Freeman into Google. I mean, should you be on a more obscure search engine, it doesn't come out on top. I'll write to them, um, <laughs> but my, my website is michaelfreemanphoto.com, that's photo with a PH. Gotcha. Well, yeah. thanks again. Appreciate you being here. Pleasure.